today we've got a really nice and aesthetic geometry problem that was left by Pierre de Fermat. And this is actually one of his lesser known problems. It was first solved by Euler, who had quite a long solution. But we're going to present a fairly simple and short solution here by putting the whole thing in a coordinate system. So let's see the setup that we have. We have a rectangle A, B, C, D. And kind of on top of that rectangle, we have a semicircle, so that's a half circle, so that AB is a diameter of that semicircle. Next, we put a point up here, P, on the semicircle, and we connect line segments to this vertex C and this vertex D. So that's our setup at the moment. And then what we have is that given the line segment length AB squared is twice line segment length AC squared, we want to show that AY squared plus BX squared equals AB squared. So let's look at those measurements. So this length right here, A to B, is square root of 2, this length right here, a to c. But I've just written it up there like in terms of square so we don't have square roots. And then we want to show that this length right here, a to y squared plus b to x squared is equal to a to b squared. So that's like our final goal. Okay, so like I said, we're going to put this whole thing in a coordinate system, and I tried this a couple of different ways, and I think the simplest place to put the origin is at the midpoint of A and B. So let's do that. So let's see, the midpoint of A and B is right about here. So I'll put my origin right there. So that means B and A both lie along the x-axis. Furthermore, let's scale this so that the length of AC is 1. So that's going to help us. So if the length of AC is 1, that means the length of AB is the square root of 2, which means B has coordinate square root of 2 over 2, comma, 0. And then A has coordinate negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, 0. Now we can fill in the rest pretty easily. So let's see, C has coordinate negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative 1. And then this has coordinate square root of 2 over 2, comma, 1, because that's below the x-axis. And then P up here has a fairly general coordinate. I'll call this A, B, but it's on that circle. Furthermore, we can easily write an equation of this circle, given that it has center 0, 0, and it has radius square root of 2 over 2. So that means it has equation x squared plus y squared equals 1 half. 1 half is the square of the square root of 2 over 2. So that means these numbers a and b satisfy that equation. We'll use that a bit later. So a squared plus b squared is equal to half. So now let's dive into these lines that we have. We want to first look at line PC. Okay, so let's first calculate its slope. So the slope of line PC, so that'll be the difference in the Y coordinates. So that gives us B plus one over the difference in the X coordinates. So that'll be A plus the square root of two over two. We can simplify that to two B plus two over two A plus the square root of two if we'd like to. Okay, then we can use the point slope form of a line to write down an equation for this line. So we'll have y minus a y coordinate. Maybe we'll use this y coordinate right here. So that'll be y plus 1 because the y coordinate is negative 1 equals slope. So that's 2b plus 2 over 2a plus root 2. And then x minus the x coordinate, which is the square root of 2 over 2. But it's negative, thus changing that to a plus. Now notice that this line intersects at x, and so the point x occurs when our little x equals 0, or I should say our little y equals 0 because we're along the x-axis. So that's important. So we plug y equals 0 into this equation and we can solve for x. So let's see. 
solving that for x, we get little x equals, so let's see, we'll end up with 2a plus root 2 over 2b plus 2, and then minus the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so just to reiterate, that's setting y equal to 0. Then we would multiply by the reciprocal of this and subtract that root 2 over 2 over. But really what we want is the distance from b to x, keeping in mind that b has this equation right here. So we need to do this x coordinate here, root 2 over 2, minus this x coordinate here, given that they're all along the same horizontal line. So that tells us that bx, or the length bx, is equal to the square root of 2 minus 2 plus a root 2 over 2b plus 2. And now let's dive into the next line. So that'll be line bp. So we need to calculate the slope and the equation of that as well. So let's see the slope in this case would be the difference in the y coordinates. So this should be a minus one down here. I think I said that, but I forgot to write it. So I have b plus one again, but now it's gonna be over a minus root two over two. We might simplify that to two b plus two over 2a minus the square root of 2, just to make it look like the other one. Now we can use point slope form again, and we'll get y plus 1 equals this slope 2b plus 2 over 2a minus root 2, and then we'll have x minus square root of 2 over 2. Now we want to find out the coordinate y. So y occurs when little y is equal to zero, kind of in parallel to what's going on up here. So solving for x, we'll get x is equal to, in this case, it is 2a minus root 2 over 2b plus 2, and then we'll have plus the square root of 2 over 2. So we get that just from setting y equals zero into this equation. And now we can calculate a y. So that's gonna be the distance between this coordinate along the x-axis, which we calculated, and a. That ends up being the square root of two um, plus two a minus root two over two b plus two. Again, doing the difference in the x coordinates, just as we did in this one up here, keeping in mind that the y coordinates of capital X and capital Y are both zero. So these are the x coordinates of capital X right here. And like I said, this was the x coordinate of capital Y. Okay, so now we've got a form for a, y, and b, x. And we know that a and b are on this circle, so they satisfy this equation. So all that's left is to do a quick calculation. So on the last board, we calculated values for a, y, and b, x. That's the distance of this line segment from a to y and b to x. We did that by getting closed formulas for the x coordinates for capital X and capital Y, given equations of these lines and stuff. Now we're ready to finish this thing off. And like I said before, we'll use the fact that the coordinate a comma b is on our circle. So that means it satisfies this equation a squared plus b squared equals half. Okay, so now let's get to it. So we have a y squared plus b x squared. That's like I said, our final goal. So let's multiply these things out and see what we get. So a y squared will be two. That's from squaring the square root of two. And then we'll have plus four times the square root of two times a uh, minus four. That's what we get from doing two this term times this term, just by binomial squared formula. And then we have a two b plus two in the denominator. Then we have to square this term. So that's gonna give us something like this. So we'll have four a squared and then minus four times the square root of two times a plus two. And this is all over two b plus two squared just as before. Okay, so that 
so far is our a y term. So now let's multiply out our b x term and see what we get for that. Okay, so we'll start with a two again from this being squared. And now we'll subtract four times the square root of two times a plus four over two b plus two. Oh, this shouldn't have been squared. That was my mistake from the last one. Okay, so that's subtracting twice the cross term here just from multiplying out binomials. And then for this last bit, we'll have plus 4a squared plus 4 square root of 2a plus 2 all over 2b plus 2 squared. So just to reiterate, that is what we get for our bx squared. And now let's simplify and cancel as much as we can. So here we have a 4 root 2a. Here's a negative 4 root 2a. They're both over the same denominator. So that means these two will cancel each other, which is good. Having these square roots, square roots of 2 in here is not super nice. And then the same thing here. Here we have a negative 4 root 2a, a plus 4 root 2a, and they're again over the same denominator. So those will cancel as well. Okay, so now let's combine everything that we can. So 2 plus 2 will give us 4, and then let's see, we'll have negative 8 over 2b plus 2. So that'll become from, from this negative 4 and this negative 4. And then next we'll have plus 8a squared plus 4 over 2b plus 2 squared. But I can do some pretty quick simplification here. So this term can quickly simplify to four over b plus one, just by factoring a two out of the numerator and the denominator. And then furthermore, by factoring a four out of the numerator and the denominator here, I'm left with two a squared plus one over b plus one quantity squared. Now I'm in a place where I can put everything into a common denominator of b plus 1 squared. So that's going to give me 4 times b plus 1 squared. Again, putting this one with a denominator of b plus 1. Minus 8 times b plus 1. And then finally plus 8a squared plus 4. This is all occurring over b plus 1 squared like that. So quickly fixing a typo that was on the last board leaves us with the following object in the numerator. We have 4 times b plus 1 squared minus 4 times b plus 1 plus 2 times a squared plus 1 all over b plus 1 squared. Now we're ready to start simplifying and we'll make use of this like I pointed out. So this is going to give us 4b squared plus 8b plus 4, multiplying this out and distributing the 4 through, minus 4b. And then it's going to be a minus 4, and then it'll be a plus 2a squared and plus 1, and this is still all over b plus 1 squared. Now next up, I'll take this 4b squared, and I'll write it as 2b squared plus 2b squared. And I do that because now I can combine this 2b squared and this 2a squared and leave us with the number 1, given that that's exactly this equation multiplied by 2. So that's going to leave me with a 2b squared left over. Then we have 8b minus 4b. That gives us 4b. And then 4 minus 4 cancels. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have this kind of thing right here. But now we can factor a 2 out of this, leaving us with a b squared plus 2b plus 1. But that b squared plus 2b plus 1 is exactly b plus 1 squared, leaving us in the end with 2. But by our scaling and construction here, Let's recall that a, b had length square root of 2, and that makes this number 2 right here exactly the length of a, b squared, which is what we wanted to end up with. And that's a good place to stop.